another Saturday live. And um, how is everyone doing? How is um, how has the week been? I'm so happy to see you. We are all here, very happy, pumped, and ready to give you nuggets as always. And I'm going to introduce myself, and everybody is going to go ahead and introduce themselves. And Madam uh, Deborah is going to quickly tell us about our guest today. Uh, quickly, my name is Princess. And if you do not know who we are, we are just DLBC singles, a group is just a group of single people and a few married people. And here we talk about how to find the right partner, how to go ahead uh, through the process of courtship all the way to marriage. And the objective is beautiful, happy, peaceful home that will, that will go on <laughs> till forever. And we also talk about empowerment. We do some empowerment series. We talk about how to become a whole man, a whole woman, because two whole people have to come together to create a beautiful whole marriage, not two broken people. And that's why we talk about every other things. Like one of the top, one of the things we're going to be talking about today is some of the things that we do here in this corner. And we want to build young people to their full potential. And so I'm going to give on the the, uh, the opportunity to Madame Deborah to introduce herself. I'm calling, so me, I'm coming to you from Canada, okay? It's morning, so good morning to you, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, good evening, good night, wherever your time zone is, good everything. And I have Madame Deborah here, go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you today. And we have uh, a guest today on the live session, uh, which um, I got to meet him some years ago uh, as a serving core member um, in Nigeria, in Enugu State. And we, we, we got to share, we were in the, in the same platform for those that I, in Nigeria, they will understand what I'm trying to say. We did the NYC together, the Nigerian uh, Youth Call Service, and that's where we met. Uh, he is uh, by name uh, Engineer Ampa Kwesi. Uh, he's so a graduate of engineering. Um, uh, specialty electrical electronics, is that? Yes. Yeah. And right. um, he also has a master's in education, oh. um, specialized in training, uh, accelerated learning, whole brain learning, and neuro linguistic programming. Oh, wow. nice. that's very far distant from, <laughs> from engineering, you know, but. It's just because of his passion, his passion, yeah. his passion uh, to educate, to instruct, to teach. And he's so interested and involved in the idea of passing on knowledge to young ones, especially children. Uh, today, he's our guest because we want him to speak to you and to us all um, about uh, resilience, uh, you know, overcoming um, any obstacle, your obstacle such that you attain your goal. So that's the topic of today. And that's per, like personal development, you know, and with all that is happening all over the world, places where you have recession, unemployment, what have you, you can just imagine, name it, uh, wars, um, uh, we need res resilience. We need resilience to be able to overcome those challenges and to be able to attain the goals we have set. And that's why we, we want to discuss this topic today. Maybe you're there and you have been thinking, um, you know, I have so much of challenges. I, I do not have, maybe I'm not uh, from which born with a golden spoon or what have you, whatever you call it. 
but and you think that it's just impossible for you to attain your goal. Today, we are going to listen to this speaker, uh, our speaker today, Engineer Ampa, is going to speak to us about his experience, how he was able to achieve his goal, to overcome those obstacles, and to still be what, as you see, is an engineer. There's a story behind it. So <laughs> we'll, get to, we'll get to hear from him. And then let me give hand over to the next, uh, our host, co-host here, so, so that he introduces, introduces himself. Thank you. Okay. David, over, here David is, um, over to you. Okay. David first, then after we'll have our guest. Uh, okay. So, um, well, I'm so excited to really talk about um, a topic like this. And I usually, I'm very, very much interested about transformational stories where somebody goes from um, a very tough um, place to overcoming obstacles and actually becoming um, a, a person which can be an inspiration to a lot of people. Um, I mean, especially now in the, in, in the age where a lot of people just believe in you just pray and everything just come into play <laughs> without doing the hard work. So for me, I, don't, I, I really hate people that think that way. Like if you don't put in the work, if you don't dedicate yourself into your craft, it's not magic. God is not a magician. I always yeah. tell people that I always say, if it, uh, I'll do this by the grace of God. I said, bro or sis, the grace of God has been available 2,000 years ago. You can't tell me you do this by the grace of God. The grace is already fully available. Now it's up to you to avail yourself to do what you're supposed to do, right? And I believe that um, by the time you share with us some of the things that you're able to do to get to where you are right now, it will open the eyes of um, a lot of us. And um, not many people have the same journey as yours, but a lot of people can will, will be able to relate to some of the struggles and some of the efforts you've put in, me included, um, to get you to where you are. So I'm really, really grateful for you coming out here to share with us your experience. Um, so I just let you to introduce yourself, give us a bit of background about uh, yourself. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm David. Um, it's a great privilege to be on this wonderful fla um, platform, it's especially the Aokoyas. Uh, the Aokoyas are uh, what I call gold getters and um, destiny changers. And uh, I'm happy that we are on this platform again. Permit me for other um, participants online. Let me start from my invitees and the hosts and those who have invited me. Because success is, is practical in nature. I don't believe in just speaking theories, principles. At least let's start from the basis. OK, I want to start with um, the Aokoyas. Thank you, if you permit me that. I came across the Okoyas in the early 2000s in Kano when their yeah, dad was our state was here. And I saw something because that is one of my principles. I see and I take advantage of that. What did I see? One, I saw resemblance in all the siblings. Two, I saw gifts. Almost all of them were playing one instrument or the other. And I was really, really attracted to them. That is, that is one secret of success, desire. You see something good in someone, you don't envy that person, but you desire it. You, you, you really want to have it. So what do you do? You draw close to those person, the person having that. But in our system today, I see a gift in you. Instead of me to come close, to tap, I envy you. I, jealousy comes in and I'm far off. And let me tell you, if you don't have a contact with someone, you cannot be impacted. 
So it is contact that brings about impact. I see something good in you. I love it. It's godly, not something that will pull me down. What happens and comes in contact. So that's my journey with the Avokoyas. I came close to them. And uh, after we left Kano, after I've learned all I could, because I joined them to learn the keyboard during my service here, I now met the lady Awokoya. <laughs> so it was easy for me to synchronize because at least I've met Ma, Moses, David, this holy princess I've not met, but today I'm meeting her life. So that is my journey with the Awokoya. So I want to say, I learned something from you people. I pick some points. Meeting Deborah at the camp, I saw a lady who is focused, heavily minded and determined. And these are kind of people I like. So it's easy for me to flow in that atmosphere. And I must tell you, moving around her camp kept me, helped me, and today I'm happy where I am. Okay, I would really want us to start with a verse of the scripture, if you, if you all don't mind, as we go ahead with the program. I just want to read Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Father, we pray you drop light to his lies and broaden our hearts. And many people who are undergoing through one or two odd today, the liberation comes our way in Jesus' name. Amen. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Please, um, this revelation, this verse is one of my let me say my backup. Have it registered in your mind that as long as you're on this earth, challenges are sure. Irrespective of where you are born, irrespective of the family you come from, irrespective of your culture, challenges are part of the making process of a man. Challenges are part of it. simply means trouble is part of our makeup system. Now, if trouble is part of my makeup system, it's left for me now to understand that the challenges I am facing or the odds or the obstacles across my path, they are not strange and we should not quickly attribute it to the works of the enemy and to demons. You know, here in Africa, sorry, most of whom, we, you know, we attribute, you know, most little challenges, we just say it's the work of the enemy. No, 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 no. You can't be sleeping. Just like David said, the grace of God has been dead 2,000 years ago. So it is for you and I to tap into that grace. It's available. So you just have to tap. If you don't tap, there will not be flow. So you can't sleep 24 hours and then wake up and say you want to pass your exam. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So the grace is available. It's for us to tap it. Whatever challenges you are passing through, whatever challenges may come your way, always have this verse of the scripture in mind. But as long as I'm a human being, I'm on earth, there are challenges, there will be challenges. I, do you know what? It is these challenges that gives birth to testimony. So if a man comes up to say, I want to share a testimony, he just overcome a challenge, get it? So if you want your life to be full of testimony, then be ready to overcome all the challenges that comes our way. Just because man are in sizes and life is in phases, so also our challenges comes in various degrees. I, I repeat myself, just because man in sizes and life is in phases, our challenges comes in different degrees. Oh, I want to be a big gate. Big gate had a lot of challenges he overcame before he becomes what he is today. So challenges are part of the making of a man. Now, let me just, as a teacher, define some of the terms we are using. We're looking at resilience. So permit me to just give you a dictionary definition of resilience. is the capacity to withstand, the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties. Resilience is the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties. Now we've seen that challenges are part of the making of a man. And when they come, do you have that capacity to withstand it? Do you have that capacity to say, no, these challenges will not bring me down. I believe that's what helped uh, Bland Bartimaeus to have his miracle. When he heard that Jesus Christ was passing by, he had heard a lot of stories about Jesus. He has healed the sick, probably. He has heard that Jesus Christ rose Lazarus from the dead. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. So he had a catalog of testimony. 
And when he heard that Jesus Christ was passing via his streets and his environment, he shouted, Lord Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And those around asked him to keep quiet. That is what happened most often. When you are passing through one or two challenges and you, you are about to cry out and someone say, keep quiet. And then you just keep quiet. Or you have been applying for admission. Probably, let's say you want to study medicine because over here we know that studying medicine is so challenging. You wrote your first jam, you had 200, you are denying. You wrote the second one, you had maybe 240, you are denying. Somebody will just give up. Okay, let me just go and read animal science. And then you pick up a course that you're not passionate about. At the end of the day, you are a frustrated graduate. The reason why we have a lot of graduates without employment is because many of them went into the university reading or studying the course. They have no link or see that as part of the principles to overcome the, some of the um, challenges we have. So I said, is the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulty. Either you withstand or you recover. If there's a challenge, how do you recover? Do you have that tenacity? You said, no, I must bounce back to life. So you just have to have that virtue. If you don't have it, that's why we are learning. We're having this discussion. It's more or less as a discussion because I'm also going to give us a little time for us to like put in our input. So we have to have that virtue. And if we don't have it, we are going to learn it today. So ability to recover quickly from difficulties. Resilience also can be looked at as toughness. Is uh, in, in material science, one of our engineering courses, we have strength of material. The strength of a material is being, the usage of, the, of a material is determinant of its strength. You don't just use a material with weak strength in a place where you require much pressure or, or usage. So your strength determines your usage. So if you want to shine in this our generation, you want to fly high like other you see them flying, then you have to be tough. You have to be tough to your environment. You have to be tough to the challenges because there's no way there's no challenges. Even in free town, we are told there's no free lunch. Okay, now one thing about resilience is this. Resilience help anyone who possesses it to stand out from the crowd. Because as we have seen, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. A lot of people die with their trouble a lot of people go ahead with their trouble, but some step out and said, no, this trouble, you follow me nowhere, and they scale through. Well, second definition of resilience, the ability of a substance or an object to spring back into space. Another word for it is elasticity. We've done that in physics, elasticity. The force of a spring that helps you to come back after it has been suppressed. So now God wants us to have that virtue. We don't need to give up in life, especially if you're coming from this our own area, the Africa. We have a lot of challenges that are self-imposed by the bad leadership. And you can't sit back and be complaining about the leadership of the government. You can't sit back and be complaining about the economy while others are making plans to move, to make progress, to develop themselves, to sit down. I do tell my students something. Those who complain and murmur, or those who grumble, they will be lame. Those who blame, they will be lame, and you will not have your name in the Hall of Fame. If you are full of blaming, you will be lame, and you will not have your name in the Hall of Fame. So if you really want to have your name in the Hall of Fame, then you have to push down the bag of complaint. I believe I'll be able to make it clear the term resilience on my only two research. So that ability to withstand, that ability to recover, and that ability to bounce back to shape. The challenges will come to disfigure, disfigure us. Challenges will come to pressurize us. But that ability is from within. It helps you to stand. Uh, I, for one, before I go into one or two points, because I really want it to be practical so that we can learn one or two things. Most times, if you're a reader, uh, there's no point I will make that will be strange. Those who've read books, who've seen a lot of things, but sometimes from personal stories, we pick one or two lessons. I, for one, I want to say, I grew up in Kano, in fact, I was born in Kano, and I grew up among the illiterate community. You know, your environment also have a way of conforming you to the nature of things around that. Around my area, the boys don't like going to school. <laughs> and somehow, somehow, 
I, I happened to be a very good footballer, so they became all my friends. So all we love doing is to play football. I can play football from money to evening without even eating food. It's just something I love doing. So education was not really carved into my, my goals. Also, I have a parent, that's why I'm happy that this group, we have parents and we have the singles. And so it's good also parents who are here to learn also. My parents were the Libra type. They allow us to do whatever you want to do. My dad goes out in the money and comes back at night. So we have that freedom, you know, just to move about and all that. So our salvation is by the grace of God. If not the mercy of God, probably by now, Maybe I should be a gang leader of one of those Boko Arams, you know? <laughs> God forbid, and thank God for salvation. Yeah, sometimes you need to appreciate salvation. It's a gift, it's a gift. You are safe, you are safe. I need to appreciate that. So I have these friends around and they made me not to see the future. So we just look at the immediate environment. And that's how I was growing in Kano. But I, there's this well in me, there's something in me crying for success. But my, my environment also is fighting against that. God helped me when I met the right company as a youth. God safe. So there's a change of, of environment. Start attending fellowship, success fellowship, Bible studies, retreat, have seminars. You know, I was introduced to books. So my mindset started having a tone. My mindset started having a tone. I started having exposure to light. You know, light brings about revelation. And once you have the amount of revelation in you, it means your height, brings about your elevation. I want to tell you that once you have that elevation, your acceleration is, will, be, will be uncontrollable. So we need revelation to give us elevation, and that elevation brings about speed, about acceleration. So light, I receive light. Light helps. The Bible tells us that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So ignorance is a great disease. If you have left the shore of Africa and you find yourself in Europe, you discover some of these things we struggle about, some of these things we blame the devil about. Actually, it's not the devil. They're embedded in books. They're embedded in systems that we just have to learn, and then we are flying. But because we are ignorant of these things, we now blame. So one of the take-homes I want us to take home here from this meeting is we we'll leave the blame game. Listening to me, having some odd because we are looking at resilience, achieving your goals despite all odds. Stop the blame game. Don't blame your parents, don't blame anyone. Just drop it, face your future. And I want to tell you if you have that kind of mindset to face your future and you see that this is my future, the grace of God is available, it is my duty to tap into it, then you see yourself flying. I've been able to establish the definition. I've been able to tell us that from the word of God, from our creator, man that is born of a woman, challenges are part of our making process. So after I received light, then the Lord helped me. I, I was taught how to set goals. All in the youth fellowship, I was taught how to set goals, daily goals, weekly goals, quarterly goals, and annual goals. So right from that time, I now set a goal because I love mathematics so well. I just love mathematics. I don't like anything that has to do with reading. In fact, I started reading literatures when I was done with my secondary school. So I had three times, so I now dive into literatures and I discovered that, wow, I've cheated myself for so long. <laughs> so long. There are so many, I started reading stories, you know, biographies, literature books, and, you know, information so embedded. But I deny myself of that knowledge due to ignorance. I just dive into anything that has to do with calculation, mathematics, physics, and I was that was my strength. So in secondary school, I now set a goal. That's one of the ways of achieving your goals despite um, resilience. Okay, so I set a goal that I want to be an engineer. So I wrote down my goal. I want to be an engineer. So I want to be an engineer. So I wrote down my goals. And at that time, since I was sponsoring myself. I had no textbook. That is an odd, you get it. This and someone who is in science class and he has no textbook and he wants to be an engineer. There are enough reasons for me to be discouraged. But because I've seen the picture, I have a mental picture of the future I want to future, I never allow those odds to limit me. So you have to have a mental picture. Where do you want to see yourself? So Forget about the now. 
sorry, so yes. you sponsored yourself as a secondary school. Yes. A secondary school. That, yes. 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 <laughs> yes, I was in that's secondary school. You know, young, that's that's in secondary school. Someone in the in high school for those the, those yeah. that are in Europe or whatever high school, uh, that between the ages of eleven and eighteen, you are in high school. Yeah. High school, yeah. and you are telling us you sponsored yourself during that period of age. Yes. Yes. I was. Uh, I was uh... I was left alone, so I had to help myself. So what happened is weekend, I go to the market and I do do some sellings. I sell what we have, what we call Gary over here. I don't know what people call it over there. If yes, it's the same cassava. name, but cassava. Byproduct of cassava. It process byproduct of cassava. So cassava I do cakes. sell it. Yes. So I do sell it during the weekends just to have something. And I was in a government school, and over there, government school is not that expensive. It's quite cheap. It's not that expensive government school. It's a school where you know you have 60 people in a class. The teacher can come maybe one or twice in a week. So you are left alone to do whatever you want to do. So that was the kind of environment I found myself in. But the dream is boiling within me. I want to be an engineer. So in front of my notebook, I do write my name, engineer Ampa. Engineer Ampa. So you know, it's just like what the scripture say, write the vision. You see. The scripture is, is all we need, sir. Ma, it's all we need. If you just believe in the scripture and holistically follow it with the grace of God, the available grace of God, you will shine. Because it gives you hope. People will not be there when you are down. Friends will not be there. Your friend will not be there. Your close friends will not be there. Your partners will not be there. But the scripture will always be there. So you have to come to a point where you believe the scripture. So I wrote down my vision and I was walking towards it. I was walking towards it. Uh, I was living in the church compound because my faith also made them to persecute me. I was living in the church compound, but nobody knows I have no home. I was always bubbling. I cracked joke. I was just a happy boy. Why? Homeless. Books, Invariably, the word of God. And, what you call? Yes. Uh, Saint domicile in French. Here in France, you call them. It's on the Saint domicile. Okay. So you can go ahead. Saint domicile. We, oui, we, oui, I was. I was sand to me. <laughs> Go ahead. But that did not allow me to pursue my vision. The vision and the picture is I want to be an engineer. I want to be a blessing to my environment. I want to be a blessing to the generation. So I was walking towards that. How do I do it? During the day, because after school, I have to go and help some families also to do some domestic work. So that at the end of the day, you know, you can have some meals. You know, you work to feed. Then we'll come back after fellowship, take a nap of one or two hours, and then I study from dawn, from maybe 12 midnight to daybreak. It comes to a point where the hairs on my hair were not really, really growing, stop growing. I don't know the mechanism. <laughs> I don't know what the hairs were so tiny and strong. But one good thing about that is I've come to like know every, I have solution to every mathematical problem in my textbook. I, if you are giving me a question, I know where the chapter is, I know the answer. I did that in physics and I did that in mathematics. Actually, I never like a uh, love chemistry because uh, we had a female teacher and she speaks so slowly. So the interest was not there and affected me. Another way to overcome resilience, don't hate your tutor. Don't hate whoever is before you. It could be your pastor, it could be your leader, it could be your husband, it could be your father. If you hate them, sincerely, nothing good will flow from them to you. That's why after creature, anything God sees, he said, and this is good. And God saw that it is good. And God saw that it is good. And when God created man, in Genesis 1 Genesis 131, it's, and God saw that everything he made was what? Very good. And if you're a teacher, very good means excellent. So you have to love what you are doing. You have to love those God has put before you. You have to love your tribe. You have to love your nation. Sometimes, sorry to use this example, when I meet Nigerians and they speak about Nigeria, it's like, oh, God, you've made a mistake to make me a Nigerian. No, we are meant to be a blessing. That's why you're from Nigeria, so that wherever you find yourself, your potential shines. I say, where are you from? Nigeria. Wow. So you mean we have Nigerians with such capacity and ability? If you're a Nigerian, you are blessed. So you must speak good of where you are coming from. So by God's grace, I put my vision ahead, and the Lord helped me. I wrote my first final exams, what we call West African Senior High. I didn't do very well, but it was not really, really easy. 
had only two credits and three passes. I don't know how you quantify your grade over there. And uh, should I give up? No, resilience is there. I went back to SS2. Uh, that was that should be grade 10, right? I went back. I didn't give up. I said, no, since I didn't make it, I can't write the next exam in the coming year. So I went back to SS2. It's form five, form four. I met my juniors who were in form four, yeah, form five here. Yeah. I met them, those who are in SS1 while I was in SS3. I met my juniors, my two years juniors. Well, you see, if you are pushing your dream or a goal, you will not be ashamed. If you are ashamed of yourself or of your condition, you will make no headway. You have to put shame aside. No, I'm just bringing the point. Amen. So you have to put shame. Let's say you're selling pepper. Okay, I was I'm in secondary school. Even when I went to the university, I still go to the market to sell the cassava flakes. Imagine I said, I'm a graduate. I cannot go to the market. Then I will die and nobody will hear my story. So whatever you are doing, just like what the Bible says, whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it. See if you are do it with all your strength. Be, be passionate about whatever whatever it is. Be passionate about it. Don't be full of joy. Don't be full of joy. Be full of joy. When you do that, you see the blessing comes because the Lord blessed the faithful laborer. Once he sees your faith, sees your faithfulness, he now releases blessing is a gift. Sometimes you can hustle, you can work hard, you're not blessed. So people find them they're in Europe for the past 20 years. They're living from hand to mouth. But somebody who goes and appreciates the blessing in three months, six months, is controlling things. The other day I followed the, the story of David, but he may not know. Sometimes, you know, when you share your story, a lot of people learn from talk about what he's doing that in his comfort of his home is making him bad from the comfort of his home. He doesn't have to go and queue, he doesn't have to go left and right. That is it. In that same era, people are traveling from the north to the south, to the west, you know, just to, they say, I'm hustling. They have to remove that word from your vocabulary. You are not hustling. I'm working and the Lord is blessing. My good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, this year, no hustling. Yeah, this year, You are no shaking hustling. tables, so you are shaking tables. You are shaking tables. You are shaking tables. <laughs> <laughs> so, we should stop saying we are hustling. No, 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 no. Uh, honestly, man, I'm working and the Lord is blessing the works of my hand. You know? The Lord ah, is blessing okay. the works of my hand. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good term. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so no, honestly, man. Not no, so no, Okay. No, 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 we are blessed, you know. We have the seed of Abraham, so we are blessed. So we are not permitted to hustle. That's why I say be fruitful. Have dominion, rule. So you are a ruler. How will a prince? Do you think the prince... Of Edibok, we said he's a hustler. They will, they will, they will, they will send him on, um, I don't know, SI. So we are not hustling, hustlers. Okay, so that helped me. I wrote down my dream. I have it, the mental picture. And when I now finished my O level, after I went back to SS2, I was so humble. It also brought about humility. That's where I learned to, to, be, to be humble. You know, you just have to, to be humble to make it in life. People may laugh at you, but People, people may look down, ah, who are this? You know, look down, you know, you are pursuing your goal. So once you have your goals ahead of you, you have to be humble. You have to put away shame. Public opinion does not really, really matter. Because most, sometimes when you're passing through all, you like to hear something, okay, for, for instance, maybe there's delay in childbearing, and then you, you, you listen to what people say. You will doubt to your God if you're not careful. It can even make you to backslide. It can, it can, it can even bring about depression. Well, if you hear, if you give off to public opinions, you look up to the scripture, you look at examples from the scripture, your life will be full of joy. Please don't allow any man, any woman, anywhere on the face of the earth to put you under pressure. You have your race, you have your face, and you have your chapter. You have your race, you're running, you have your face, and you have your chapter. Even if you are from the same womb, you will not really achieve your, reach your destination at the same time. So we must teach the younger generation that. So with that kind of mindset, I, after secondary school, I did a little job as a sales boy and I, I was paid 2,000 Naira. So I keep 1,000 Naira and then I was using 1,000 to feed myself. Once my result came out this time around, it was quite better. So I bought a remedial form, what we call pre-degree. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. 1,000 Naira per month or per day? Per month, 2,000 Naira per month. Which year was that? That was 20, 2009, 2010. 
2009. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Okay, right on. <laughs> so that was my monthly salary for a month. So I was able to manage, you know, then the cheapest food is this same cassava flakes. Just get it, get some beans. That was when I learned how to take gari without sugar. I used to use salt and I so much enjoy it. You see, but the availability became something I love to do. So you yeah. put salt in your gari? Is that? Yeah, very you can try it, man. It's so sweet. I learned it during that that time of hardship, and it became a lifestyle. No. <laughs> I'm bad. When, it's so sweet. Yeah, you see. No, I like. When you I like to, your positivity. Yeah. yeah. You're very... When you learn, yeah. When you learn to take approach life in a simple way, you will not struggle. You will not. You will not have high blood pressure. You will not. But the problem we have is, you know, I want to be like Deborah. I want to be like Preset. Do you know the sacrifice they've paid behind or the parents have paid for them? Everyone, as I said, men are in sizes, life is in phases, and our challenges are in degrees. So I loved my, even till now, I love taking my Gary with salt. So, man, I really, you can try it, please. It's, a, it's an assignment, you know, just try it if, if you have Gary over there. So, with that, I was able to get admission. Because of our time, I wouldn't want to go into detail, but I was able to get admission with that accommodation. So then uh, what happened was that someone decided to squat me as a degree student. And I went to university with a mat. Yeah, yeah, it's a mat. A, yeah. a, I don't know, a piece it's, of it's, it would be like um, a just something you just put on the ground. Yeah. Yes. I was not privileged to have a bed or a bunk. So I sleep on the floor as an undergraduate. Now the goal is the future, not engineer. the present. So yes, it's just engineer. So in that engineer. degree, they were calling me engineer. I'm, so yeah, all that you are thinking about I'm, is, I'm becoming an engineer, just engineer before. tomorrow. My math that, doesn't matter. It does, I don't all. care. I'm on the math. No problem. It's engineer. Yes. yes. So, it's just the goal. You have to be passionate about your goal. You just have to be passionate about your goal. So I don't care. I eat. I don't eat. Once I have my stomach stuck with Gary, I'm good to go. And do you know what? None of my mates, sincerely, when I started sharing my test, my, my stories on, in, on Facebook, they were reacting. A lot of them were like, you mean you went through this? Oh, and you were so full of joy, full of peace. And, you know, and I remember what the scripture says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I rely on the joy of the Lord. I don't rely on my present circumstances. The truth is, if you want to look at the present challenges or present circumstances of what you're passing through, you will never make any headway in life. Let's look at um, Nick. No hands, no legs, but he made it. Nick had a lot of storms, but because of the future and the prophetic words of his parents, despite all odds, now Nick moves around continents and his story it's an encouragement to someone. So the degree of your challenges is high motivation for others. So you must not look at your present condition. You must not look at the present condition. So after my pre-degree, I was long place. I got the placement. It was not easy. We studied hard. We paid the price. In fact, while I was a pre-degree student, all the good students in my department from 100 level to final year, I know them by name. And I always meet them to ask questions. You know my introduction. Contact begats impacts. Contact, you have to come close. You need to be mentored. Put away jealousy, put away envy. Those things are killers. Even in ministry, you see a brother, a sister manifesting some gifts. Oh, this is a sister who went to the same school. She's on every, she's doing great for God. Learn. You don't just have to push envy, you know, say negative. No, 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 no. When you are, so if you have such a mindset, you will remain with. Methuselah. So you have to love people, have that mind to learn. So I know all the good guys in my department from 100 level to 500 level. And I now extend it to the School of Engineering. I still have their names upstairs, mechanical, electrical, chemical. I know those guys. Sometimes I find a way of, you know, getting close. You know, I see them as a semi-god. Engineer, man, this guy, he knows calculations, calculus, integral. So those things keep me and kept me burning. And with the grace of God that we tapped because we never slept, never said, oh, the grace of God is there. No, we walk towards it. We also ask for it and it 
really, really helped us. And today, by God's grace, while I was about running up, I told myself, I really want to find myself in a small country than in Enugu. That was when I made that declaration. I want to find myself in a small island just to make impact. I just want to be around a little yeah, island. Really. So you had impact. that dream from Enugu. Ah, we had a lot of dreams at that camp. We really <laughs> had a lot of dreams. Yes. Really. Yes. Yeah. So I kept praying. I want to be a missionary anywhere. I find myself in my school working, but I really want to find myself in an island. And as God will work it, do it. After I left Enugu, went back to Yola, to my base. I worked in a secondary school, passionately affecting life, working as if it's my father's school, touched a lot of life from there. The Lord opened door. I found myself in Lagos, in Glow. From Glow, after working for almost two years, I now find myself in Equatorial Guinea. And when I enter Equatorial Guinea, the power of words, Please, I need to chip in this resilience. What, when, whatever you are passing through, please don't alter negative words. Don't. Remember, God used words to create the world. In the beginning, the God created the heavens and the earth. He said, let there be, and there was. Please mind the words that come out of your mind, especially in trying moments. Why am I saying this? When I was entering Ikotragini for the first time, the brother came to pick me at the airport. I saw a very wonderful building, very nice structure. And I asked him, what is this? And I told him, that's US embassy. I said, one day I'm going to work here. Do you get that? Why is this? It's a US embassy. I said, one day I'm going to work in this place. I saw that seed from the first day I entered in Kutura Guinea. And after I found myself in the school, I worked for two years, our contract. God terminated, and God, in his miraculous way, I know no one, I just saw a vacancy, I applied. That's how, out of 21 applicants, eight of us were called back for the interview. Out of the eight, three people were given provisional employment. Out of the three, I was the only one that was picked up. That was in 2017. So after working for a year, I decided to come back for my master's because I discovered that the goal to work with students has been, you know, there. So I said, no, let me go and do my MSc. Let me add capacity. So it's one of those ways of building competence, capacity. It's one of the seven C's of resilience. You have capacity, you have competence, you have, uh, I couldn't get them down, but please you can Google them. Competence and capacity. Once you have capacity, you can build up resilience. So I decided to resign and then come down for my master's. Why? In 2012, as an engineer, I was... In Ghana, I got an admission as a telecom engineer. Mind you, I've already also put down my goals while in Enugu. After my graduation, I want to do my MSc. So I went to Ghana, got admission in Kwame Nkrumah University of Technology, thinking the same environment like Nigeria, thinking I would self sponsor myself. Oh my God, I met hell. So I was a telecom student in Ghana 2012, doing well. I had a Liberian classmate, a Nigerian classmate. In fact, I was like their senior brother. I take them to class. I practically planned their timetable because they were much younger in age. So I carried them to the class. We study. I told them we are here to have an MSc and we must. So at a point, they now discovered I was having challenge with feeding. So the Liberian guy will come, Ampa, let's go and eat. Sometimes I, I could not say no when the hunger has reached the highest degree. But at the point, I was so ashamed. I said, no, I can't be putting bodies on my classmate. And I said, Lord, just help me. I can't continue like this. Probably it's not the time for me to have my MSc, whatever the time will, I'm ready. And within that time, that was when Glow called me. I was in Ghana, but my Nigerian SIM was in my phone. I had an invitation from Glow. I left Ghana that night because the interview was the next day. I left Kumasi, oh my God. Resilience, don't give up. Oh man, I left Kumasi to Accra. Kumasi to Accra is like four hours. I left Accra, middle of the night. I continued the journey. I left at Florida, Ghana border around 6 a.m. Crossover, continue the journey. Arrive um, Seme border around 12. Look for a bike from Seme border. Those of you who know Nigeria very well. To VI, I was on bike. And since I can speak house, I told the guy, I'm going for interview. The guy said, what? I said, I must not miss it. The young man was entering through oh, trailers. This guy is still alive. Oh, my yeah. So I arrived Globe Plaza, that is in VI. I was the last candidate. I was so dirty. I went to the toilet. I just shit, clean up, and I entered, sweating and smiling. And the, the people look at me, why are you smiling? Why are you smiling? I said, I'm so excited to be in this boardroom, to be interviewed. Wow. Look at the energy this guy is speaking with. 
I said, I'm so excited because I started my journey yesterday night from where they say Ghana. Really, I say, why? I said, because I really want to work with Glow. Oh my God, they saw the joy, they saw the zest, they saw the energy. The passion. And the white man look at me. And say, the passion. And the white man look the at passion. me and said, wow. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy with you. And anytime a that's white man tells me that. that we want. <sighs> yeah, that is the kind of guy. Same thing that yeah. happens in the American embassy. When the way I spoke and, you know, I expressed myself. You see, interviews, not a do or die affair. You just know that if you have God, you get it or you lose it. And you losing it does not mean you are a failure. So if you have that kind of positive mindset, you approach life with positivity. So that's how I left the MSc Telecom Engineering and I find myself in GLOW. From there, I now came down to Sierra Guinea after two years. But still, I never allowed the dream to die. I now find myself working among youth, among students. I have a way, I have this gift of making complex things simple. Now, I have to have a educational backup. So that when you are speaking, oh, MSc this, you know, you have these qualifications. You don't just speak like an empty verse. So after your, you don't just stop, wherever, add value. So that's how I found myself back. This time around, I refused to go back to Ghana because of the experience, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I went back to Northern Nigeria where, the, where education is cheap, even though I almost regretted, you know? But to have, to cut the long story short, that's how I, I finished. I'm just left with my final defense. If any moment I'll go to have the defense due to the strike and all those things, you know? But I kept my vision. So when I came back 2020 to I started they applying to my company because I told myself, this place I'll work here. There were so many odds. I sent my application, Asia will bounce it. New people have been employed, but I kept praying and I kept reapplying. For the past two years, I applied five times. The last one, I said, no, the lion, the, 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 the giant was taken by us. Champions must not give up. So I went into serious prayer, believing God. I tell you, I was in the presence of God when I received an invitation for an interview. I should come back to the embassy. And I couldn't make it because I was far away. I just said, God, take over. But the white man now said, this guy has worked here. Let's call him back. And that's how I was employed without interview. Resilience. Resilience. It pays when you don't give up. I could have given up and remained somewhere. And truly, truly, on the planet, as there are places you find yourself, the potential should be developed. You have better platforms to even do ministry to affect more lives. So you have to be resilient. You don't need to give up whatever you are passing through. So now I just want to categorize. I've given you my brief story. Then let's just go into little, little things. One, what, how, what do I do to overcome all of this?